Thank you, guys. Um, normally, I'd start a talk about mobile. Um, uh, up until about a year ago, I would ask everybody in the audience to put their hands up and uh, tell me if they've got a smartphone. Okay, that's a pretty redundant question now. It's more like who's got a smartphone and who's messing about with it right now while I'm talking? One, two, three, four. Yeah, there's plenty of people in the audience. Um, and that's not a criticism at all because um, everybody's completely and utterly obsessed with their smartphones. So in Europe, we've now gone over 250 times a day that we interact with our smartphones. Usually when I say that stat, people look at themselves and go, oh, and they realize, oh yeah, that's me, um, <laughs> constantly touching their phones. Um, and if we look at this, this is one of my favorite pictures of recently. This is from China, um, and this is a, a, a city in China that has introduced a uh, smartphone uh, lane for people who are on their smartphones and a smartphone uh, 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 band lane so that you can actually walk down the street. If you walk down the streets of London recently, it's really difficult to actually navigate around there. Now, sometimes people say, yeah, well, that's a long way away, that's China. Uh, well, this is Antwerp uh, in Belgium, so it's getting kind of closer. This is a texting lane uh, in Antwerp there to stop people uh, bumping into it. I spend a lot of time in Copenhagen. Actually, co people in Copenhagen are really, really careful with their smartphones because there's millions of bikes flying around all over the place. It's a bit like Amsterdam. So people are a bit more respectful for that. So um, I love this stat. Uh, in the UK, uh, there are 1.1 billion smartphone interactions a day. Okay. So if we talk about change and how business has to change and how people have to change to adapt to this, people are becoming incredibly um, uh, obsessed with their smartphones. And one of the things that's driving this is uh, instant messaging. So if you look at somebody like WhatsApp, WhatsApp is coming close to having a billion users on WhatsApp. And there's lots of other uh, players in that market that have come in as well. Uh, there's a really innovative one called Line. Is anybody on Line? One? By the end of today, all sign up for Line. It's incredible. It's like WhatsApp, but fun. Uh, it's, it's really, really interesting. I'll get in real trouble with WhatsApp for that now. Um, but uh, these are emerging technologies that are hundreds of millions of people um, uh, adopting and using as their new way to communicate. So does anybody want to guess what the fourth most popular use of a smartphone is? Selfie? Oh, no, no. Anybody else? Facebook? Yeah, that's a good, good answer. The fourth most popular use of a smartphone is making a phone call. <laughs> and by the end of this year, it will be the fifth. So it will have dropped down to the fifth most popular use. So um, I've been asking industry guys uh, for, for quite a long time, at which point do we stop calling it a smartphone? Because uh, the phone is becoming largely ir irrelevant. And if you look at um, the group that everybody starts to call uh, the millennials, uh, which is kind of you lot, most of you in the room, certainly not me anymore, um, the 20 to 25 year olds, there's an interesting phenomenon here. Um, one quarter of millennials make less than one voice call a week. That's staggering. If you imagine the first use of the mobile phone, people use the mobile phone all the time to talk to each other, but one quarter of smartphone users in that millennial group only make one voice call a week. It's constantly <coughs> on the, uh, the instant messaging. So, it used to be an insult to say, hey, you've got the attention span of a goldfish. Uh, unfortunately, now that's a compliment because of all of these different changes in the world, and particularly the uh, obsession with the smartphone, the attention span of the human has actually dropped below that of a goldfish. So in the Mi Microsoft research this year, uh, the human attention span was measured at 7.6 seconds. Um, a goldfish is at 8, by the way. So it's actually not cruel to put a goldfish in a small bowl because he's kind of swimming around and going, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. So it, the attention span is really, really short. But what this impact has for us and for businesses, you need to make sure that you are reaching out to the consumer in the way they want to be reached out to and capture their attention uh, very, very quickly, 7.6 seconds, um, and make sure that the experience that they have with a smartphone um, is a good one. So, PC's dead, right? Yeah, smartphone lives. Uh, I think it was Mark Twain that said that rumours of my death have been greatly exaggerated. Yeah? Um, and that's the same for the PC. This PC shipments are still uh, happening all over the world, but we need to be mindful of the fact that the smartphone shipments are, 
are, are increasing at an exponential rate. There's some fantastic research showing that the next billion people that reach the internet will reach it, pretty much all of those billion will reach it through the smartphone and never see a PC. And they'll be on that smartphone and that'll be the only access. A lot of that is driven from the emerging markets, but certainly smartphone is becoming the centre of, of people's lives. So when we come to retail and retailers, um, how do they react to that? The problem is they've been there before and the been there before was the internet. So when the internet first came around, uh, those of you old enough to remember, there was this big uh, a boom of the internet and then the bubble burst. And the reason it burst was because it, the world wasn't quite ready and the speeds weren't quite ready. So everybody thought that the internet was going to be the new way to talk to the, to the customer, but the speed wasn't there. What happened? The second wave of the internet came with broadband, and uh, broadband meant that finally there was the speed for you to use your computer to go online shopping. So, so around about one-fifth of the, the shopping in the UK now is done through online, through, through desktop. And to a similar extent, that's been the same thing with mobile. Uh, there was this big trend and everybody saying, this is the year of the mobile. I was at a trade show last week and the guy was saying, you know, what is this year of? He said, this year's the year of mobile. He said, but I said that in 2014, 2013, 2012 and 2011. So everybody's been telling everybody that you really need to be thinking about getting mobile sorted out. And the challenge is that a lot of businesses see that as a future thing. But for the first time this year, Retail really needs to wake up because the smartphone will become the most trafficked internet device this year before the end of the year. So it will actually go past desktop. And that has big implications uh, for retail in particular, but for travel and other people too. Because if you're accessing uh, a website through your smartphone, it's a completely different experience than sitting in front of your desktop. People talk a lot about payments, so you will have heard of PayPal and Apple Pay and Google Wallet and Samsung Pay. But the thing is, it's not all about payment. Payment is that pain point where you know, it's really painful to go through the payment on a website, so making that really fast is important. But the thing is, um, payment isn't about engagement. So you, this is a, a map of a customer journey from the start to the end, and payment comes about three quarters of the way along. And it's not an emotive thing. I don't get up in the morning and say, hey, I can't wait to pay for my coffee today. I actually get up and say, hey, I can't wait for my coffee, and then payment is part of that. So what's really important for all of uh, a business to realise is that you, the consumers, you want to have that interaction with them at all of these different stages. So you want to do your research from your smartphone. You want to be standing in the store and, and getting information. Uh, a lot of uh, consumers, when they're in a shop, think they know more about the products than the people that are selling it to them because they have the internet in their hands, yeah? the magic Google. So it's really important to interact with the consumer at all of these different levels. So what does the future hold? It's going to get really interesting because you have this thing called the Internet of Things coming. And this is where devices will be able to be connected to the internet so that you can communicate with them. And the smartphone is an ideal way to communicate with those devices. People are often talking about the fridge that restocks itself, but I think one of the really exciting ones that I think will come uh, into practical application in 2016, and you heard it first here, is the fir world's first mass connected car. So one of the major car manufacturers is going to launch a mass market car next year that is connected to the internet. It has an internet presence. Now that has huge implications. Imagine driving up to the petrol station where your car then talks to the uh, computer system of the petrol station and comes up with the amount that you have to pay. So you don't have to go into there and you can go faster and all sorts of diagnostics that can come back from the car. Now, we're a little bit away from that scene in Minority Report with Tom Cruise where he's walking down uh, the alleyway and it's looking at his eye and changing the ads as he's walking down there. But the technology already exists to take your smartphone. So your smartphone can be communicating with those ads uh, using all sorts of technologies like beacons and Wi-Fi and geofencing so that you have your phone in your pocket and those ads can change and be suited to you as you walk into different environments. That technology is already there. I'll leave you with this final picture. So I've painted a picture of massive change and business not being quite ready for it, but some businesses are adopting new technologies that let them interact with the consumer. This is an example from the US uh, where uh, a, a smartphone user is buying a dress through a shop window with a shopper shut.
So she's scanning a, a QR code and it's pulling up the dress. She buys the dress and it gets delivered to, to her office the next day. So some businesses are bringing that forward. But the speed of change means that we really have reached uh, the smartphone tipping point and the obsession with the customer and 2016 really will be the year of the mobile. Thank you.